All right, thanks, Dennis. Now to what's being called the largest criminal health care fraud takedown in the Department of Justice history. 243 people across the country charged for milking the system for $712 million in false medical claims and bills, including five people here in the Bay Area. For more on this, we turn to our I-Team investigator, Adam Walser. Adam? Well, Brendan, federal agents say two of the targets of this crackdown were operating a home health care business. They say never treated patients, but collected millions of your tax dollars. It's, it's an office space that doesn't really do any business. That's how federal investigators describe Gold Care Home Health Care, which operated for three years in this Bush Boulevard office building. An indictment unsealed today says the business's owners stole senior citizens' identities and used them to bill Medicare nearly two and a half million dollars for home health care services that were never needed or provided. These uh, fraudsters are stealing the uh, identities of physician providers as well as patients. Something seemed odd. And it was. Tess Palos rented office space to Amari Perez of Miami and Pilar Garcia Lorenzo of Tampa. When the feds started asking questions, he just disappeared and then the rent stopped coming in. The indictment says both partners used the company's bank accounts as their personal ATMs, withdrawing tens of thousands of dollars at a time. Records show that less than 10 years ago, Garcia Lorenzo claimed bankruptcy at that time, saying she earned less than $10,000 per year. But she recently moved into this home and neighbors say she's been spending plenty. I knew something wasn't right. The whole time they've been there, it's been improvements, improvements, improvements. So they added this whole portion? Yeah, all of these. Yeah. This picture was taken by the county appraiser's office when Garcia Lorenzo bought the house. She quickly paid off the mortgage and improvements began. That fountain, the new fence, I mean, painting, all kinds of stuff. In the back, a hot tub, a covered porch, and an outdoor kitchen. Mucho dinero, see? And this paint a lot of money. Hello? We tried to talk to Garcia Lorenzo, but nobody answered her door today. When we told neighbors about the indictment, they were less than thrilled about all those new improvements. For people like that to steal what other people really need is, is not right. About 900 law enforcement officers nationwide were involved in this crackdown. The FBI says Miami led the nation in health care fraud, where 73 defendants were charged with more than $260 million dollars in fraudulent billing. Thursday morning, they swept down on Duran's company, American Therapeutic Corporation, and its seven offices, making arrests, seizing boxes of evidence, hauling out computers. Duran has been charged with a dozen counts of health care fraud. The alleged illegal conduct here charged in this indictment is in many respects unlike anything we've seen before in terms of the nature and the size of the scheme. Prosecutors allege ATC altered patient files, medications, and therapists' notes and paid halfway houses and assisted living facilities to provide patients, even paid kickbacks to some patients. Well, they prey on the most vulnerable citizens, and those patients, as it relates to community mental health centers, uh, are demented patients, you know, not able to care for themselves. Duran's attorney said he would not comment on his client's case. Prosecutors say the Miami case is the latest in a litany of schemes run nationwide to defraud Medicare and, in essence, you. We're legitimate taxpayers are really paying for these fraud schemes. Indeed, this is money that you and I work for. It's coming out of our paychecks every two weeks, bi-weekly. It's estimated Medicare fraud amounts to $60 billion. That's right, billion dollars a year. But the feds are fighting back. This team that took down American Therapeutic Corporation is part of a multi-agency Medicare fraud strike force operating in seven major U.S. cities. One of their tools, data mining. The strike force looks for spikes, unusually high claims in a region or from an individual provider. And they're able to access that data almost as soon as the claim is filed. We can see these trends as they happen uh, instead of six months a year down the road after the program has been taken advantage of. In recent months, the strike force broke up major Medicare fraud schemes in Detroit, Los Angeles, and New York. The problem, federal agents say, is that as soon as they bust one operation, another pops up. The reason? For too long, Medicare has been a cash cow that keeps on giving.
This building is listed as the home office of Serenity Keepers, a drug treatment organization and facility on Daniel Court in Lexington. According to the Secretary of State's office, this is an active LLC registered by Dolores Jordan. Jordan is one of the two defendants named on a federal indictment out of North Carolina that accuses the two of defrauding Medicaid out of millions of dollars. The other person named is Donald Booker. According to that indictment, Jordan and co-conspirators recruited Medicaid-eligible beneficiaries for housing, among other programs, which were tied back to Booker and Jordan. One of those people who says she was recruited was Alonda Woods. I was at social services trying to get some assistance, and a guy approached me and asked me, did I have Medicaid? And did I have did I need housing? And I told him yes. Once enrolled in a program, investigators say that recruiters told participants they were required to submit urine samples for drug testing, samples submitted to a lab owned by Booker. Investigators say those samples were medically unnecessary, and this was all part of a scheme that involved millions of dollars and led to the arrests of Donald Booker and Dolores Jordan. As we mentioned, Jordan operates this facility in Lexington. And last week, federal agents dropped by for a, quote, judicially authorized activity as part of an ongoing fraud investigation. He's not connected, so it's no, nobody's getting kicked out. That's rumors, that's what happened. When you have people who are sitting around bored, have nothing to talk about, they see the FBI, that gets scary. This is Maurice, who says that he is Jordan's nephew. He says his aunt did know Booker, but doesn't believe they actually did business together. Maurice says that they are doing everything by the book at Serenity Keepers, where he is a peer advisor and is continuing to hold meetings, trying to help people stay clean in recovery. We haven't done anything illegal. We're not going to do anything illegal. This is not an illegal operation. This is a legal drug treatment program that we are doing here. We talked to several residents who did not want to speak on camera, but they told LEX 18 they have been reassured that the facility will stay open, but they were alarmed by the presence of federal agents last week, and they hope that this situation in North Carolina does not interrupt their continued path to recovery that they can afford on Medicaid. Last week, the AG's office announced the first round of charges involving a company operating here that allegedly stole $9.5 million in taxpayer money. Courtroom testimony this week revealed another dozen companies are in the crosshairs. These checks, totaling well over $100,000, were all written over the last 18 months from companies under investigation by the Attorney General's office for suspected Medicaid fraud to Abdi Rashid Saeed, even though he had already been ordered by a judge to no longer receive Medicaid payments after he was convicted of theft by swindle early last year. It's part of an expansive investigation into suspected fraud involving companies providing personal care assistant or PCA services. Last week, the AG's office charged 18 people, including five with racketeering, alleging they used their company, Minnesota Professional, to defraud Medicaid to the tune of $9.5 million of taxpayer money. Can you say hi? PCAs help people, often elderly or disabled, who need assistance with things like grooming, bathing, eating, or using the bathroom. Minnesotans meeting income requirements can receive these services through a Medicaid program administered by the Minnesota Department of Human Services. The PCA companies submit paperwork documenting the services they provided, and they get reimbursements from the state. In the Minnesota professional case, the charges say they overbilled and double-billed and lined the pockets of friends and family members. Abdi Rashid Saeed was convicted in a similar scam with his former PCA company. Now, details of the AG Medicaid Fraud Unit's continuing investigation are coming out in court as they accuse Sayed of violating his probation by receiving Medicaid money. The lead investigator testified that they've executed over 50 search warrants, including at 11 different companies that paid Sayed for consulting work. Several of those companies operated out of the same nondescript building on Central Avenue in Minneapolis. Search warrants allege business and family relationships between the owners of the companies and a lot of red flags, such as billing for dozens of the same recipients at the same time. No one from those other businesses have been charged with a crime, but the Attorney General's office says additional charges are expected. I spoke with the attorney for Abi Rashid Saeed, and he told me that the state has made allegations that do not amount to a violation of his probation, and he says they're confident the court will be able to see that. What started off as police looking into an account that was opened at a Wells Fargo here in Mount Dora turned into an investigation into Medicaid fraud. And some of those victims say their insurance was billed thousands of dollars for transportation services they never used. 
A mother-daughter duo is behind bars after police say they ran an insurance fraud scheme for eight to ten months back in 2022. Jessica Chichile and her mother Heather Steverson are both facing more than 200 charges combined. They set themselves up as drivers and the people who uh, their information is stalled their Medicaid, they use them as their riders. Um, and so they would be able to schedule four of them at a time and go all over from Orlando to Sarasota to Bradenton, go to different medical uh, uh, facilities uh, and then charge uh, M Medicaid for those trips. This Eustis police detective who asked to remain off camera took us inside the investigation. He told us this started after a man reported a Wells Fargo bank account was opened under his name with a false power of attorney, who police say turned out to be Heather Steverson. Upon further investigation, police found a payment to the account from Motive Care, a transportation company that helps people find rides to appointments and get reimbursement for drivers. There was a, a payroll check from Motive Care that actually went into the account, and that's how we were able to trace it back to uh, where we eventually found was the suspects. Through its own investigation, police say Motive Care was able to come up with three accounts connected to Steverson and Che Chile, with 12 victims attached to those accounts. I never heard of those doctors, so I had never been to those doctors. Police say Morgan Marks was one of those victims. She says she was unable to use her benefits for six to seven months because of the fraudulent activity. That completely screwed me over being able to go to my doctors. Because my stay well had a hold on my account because of all the activity that wasn't coming from me. In Lake County, Emily McLeod, Getting Results, News 6.